are the stories from the road of an automotive diagnostic robot from the future to discover new problems and new vehicles and to go where no other robot has gone before. Robotech was called to a shop on a 1997 Honda Accord with a 1.8 liter F18 engine. The car had misfiring cylinders upon acceleration. It also had codes P0300, or general misfire code, and codes P0304 and P0302, or misfire on cylinders 2 and 4. The shop performed a tune-up, due to old and worn-out ignition components. They also cleaned the throttle body, and replaced the oil. These were general repairs that the vehicle did need, nevertheless, the vehicle was still the same. Finally, the shop opted to replace the ignition coil, but to no avail. It was then that the shop decided to call me in for assistance. When I got to the shop, I spoke to the tech that worked on the car. He said that the vehicle was running rich when the misfire was happening. I asked why he thought that, and he said that fuel trims went high during the misfire. So, I started my diagnostic by doing a code and data stream analysis. I retrieved codes P0300, P0302 and P0304, in line with what the shop told me, I also got a P0172, or system 2 rich. Bank 1? Well, rich conditions are rarer, so I opted to continue and do a fuel trim analysis. I graphed the fuel trims and saw that at idle and higher PM, the fuel trims were perfect, but, during a loaded condition the fuel trims went high in the negative numbers. That meant that the ECM was reducing fuel injection pulse, due to a rich condition. But rich condition from where? And why was the rich condition only on a loaded engine? I could only think of one reason, a leaky injector. That had to be the cause, but, I needed to prove it. This injector had to have an internal issue that only acted up during a wide pulse condition, because at idle it was fine. The only way to prove the injector was to do a leak down test, using an injector pulser. This is done with the engine off, by pressurizing the fuel rail, connecting a fuel pressure gauge, and pulsing the injector for a predetermined amount of time. As I did the test, I saw no difference in drop between all four injectors. I knew that as little as a 2 psi difference was enough to cause problems, the leaky injector should have dropped lower on the gauge, when pulsing at a long pulse width. This issue was not a leaky injector, but wait a minute, what could it possibly be then? I felt like, who wants to be a millionaire, and calling a friend? Alright, enough of the self-loathing. I decided to get tough with this Honda, and opted for a 5 gas analyzer. The 5 gas was the authority on air fuel issues. I connected the exhaust probe, and proceeded to do an idle and high RPM, unloaded test. The mixture was right on the money. Then, as I continued with the preloaded part of the test, I immediately saw that the HC went through the roof, but, I also saw that the O2 content went high. What was that? Why? Okay, there was one possibility. High HC equals raw fuel, and, high O2 or oxygen content equals excess air, or normally a lean condition. The issue only happened on a loaded engine. So, I asked myself, what's working only on a loaded engine? The answer was the EGR valve. This car had a valve position sensor on top of the EGR valve. I had no codes for the EGR whatsoever. I decided to disconnect the EGR vacuum hose, and see if the misfire was still there. Wow, what a shock. It was gone. The misfire was gone. Now, I had to find out why. The fastest way was to manually activate the EGR, using a hand vacuum pump. As I vacuumed the EGR valve, I was expecting to stall the engine, but it did not. The engine started to misfire. I then disconnected coils 2 and 4, and saw no difference whatsoever. This EGR valve was only having an effect on cylinders 2 and 4. After researching the issue a little deeper on the web, and my database, 
I realized that Hondas have a recurring problem with intake manifold clogging EGR passages. There's a procedure, whereby, a hole is drilled at the top of the manifold, then threads are tapped, so that a hex plug is then used to plug the hole. Through these holes, the intake manifold conduits for the EGR are then cleaned and decarbonized, using carburetor cleaner and a snake wire. I then, gave the tech a detailed procedure of the repair. Afterwards, the vehicle left and was never seen again. This case study explores two points on auto diagnostics, even though you think that you know what's wrong with the vehicle, always prove your theory. The second is the use of the web during diagnostics. The web is now your biggest friend, so far as information is concerned. So, use it to your best advantage. This robot will now power down for a recharge. Will I dream? I don't know. See you next time.